Hello. So, hello everyone, and thank you very much for joining our session about refashioning and upcycling clothes. In our session, um, I'll be speaking to three talented designers uh, who will be talking about revitalizing old garments and the importance of rethinking fashion. So, without further to do, uh, ado, uh, please welcome Kabami. Um, for I'm gonna I'm gonna have to let you say your uh, brand name again. The brand Sorry. name is Fuatamoyo, so it's actually a Swahili word. And what does it mean? It means follow the heart. Ah, lovely! Yeah. And then we have yeah. the lovely, <laughs> and then we have the lovely Naomi. And uh, Naomi's uh, yeah. brand name is Naya Ware. And then we have Shamira with Lani Rani, which I've just been, learnt, uh, been told that it means boss. Mm. Boss and <laughs> So Rani is the Sanskrit word for queen. So it's the boss queen, someone who owns her journey. Wow. It couldn't get better than that. Uh, so just to kick it off, Kabami, I was going to say, can you tell us a little bit more about your upcycle brand? What do you upcycle and where are you based? Uh, so I am actually currently based in Cape Town. Uh, so, uh, like I was saying earlier on, the brand is called Fata Moyo and, uh, the whole concept just started from the name itself, uh, basically saying, um, in translation in English it would mean follow the heart and the way we write heart, the he is always in a different color. So it actually read follow the art. Uh, uh -huh. so the whole, the whole concept beyond when you pursue the things that you love, creativity come out of it. Um, and also, you know, I've always loved this quote that says, uh, home is where the heart is. Um, so I wanted to build a brand that is uh, just bigger than just a fashion brand, but more of a lifestyle brand. Um, so I work on the brand with my siblings. Uh, there's four of us, two sisters and two brothers um because yeah. the foundation of anything creative started at home and uh, so we got together uh actually crazy enough just before the pandemic and we decided we wanted to do a brand uh so the brand uh focus we come from a background of art and uh trying to meet the two medium between art and fashion and combine them uh so what we do we do a lot of uh upcycling in terms of like uh old garment uh, doing art pieces on them and just making them brand new and just giving them value and and characters um, we um, we paint uh, old furnitures we upcycle old mannequins and turn them into wow. lamps uh, so basically try to paint a whole lifestyle into a brand uh, using art to upcycle all pieces and just giving them life and uh, and all, all, are you all siblings? Are you all artists? So you add yeah, so, your... Yeah, so I mean, we come from a very crazy artistic family where my dad's out of the family. My grandfather was a sculptor and my dad was a fine artist and my dad, older brother, was also an artist. On my mom's side of the family, my mom's younger brother is a fashion designer. Uh, so it was one of those uh, growing up in a family of seven kids where everybody's very out there with their creative thinking and boldness. And uh, yeah, so my sister actually did fashion. Uh, I also ended up working in the fashion industry. Uh, my younger brother uh, is, does uh, art direction and my, young, my other younger sister did actually fine art. So yeah, it's uh, four creative. The perfect combo. <laughs> yeah, 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 a lot of passion. And, uh, but that's where greatness comes from, I guess, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. And Naomi, so, I, I, so a little background with Naomi. She's one of our women entrepreneurs that we work with at Imaloa Collective. And uh, oh, we nice. support a lot of women entrepreneurs as well as eco-artisans. And Naomi uh, works a lot with waste textiles and waste fabrics, particularly those that come from uh, factories and uh, textile industries. So Thanks. Naomi, um, I'll let Naomi do her talking. And so just let us know um, what kind of craft you do, what kind of materials you do for your brand. Can you hear me, Naomi? So um, basically, <laughs> um, hi everyone, I'm Naomi. 
Yes, I hear you. I think it just went out for the internet for two minutes. You hear me now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Better. Okay. So I'm Naomi. I'm from Mauritius. Um, like uh, Priya said, we just met this year. And actually, um, for myself, I do, I, I come from a family that was uh, dressmakers, generation of generations of dressmakers. And I didn't like dressmaking. <laughs> I really like what everyone do, but I don't like dressmaking. I really love handicraft. Uh, crafting everything that could be done that is jewelries, uh, bags and everything. All accessories are for me, but not clothing. Um, yeah. I, I, I normally do, I started with jewelries for friends, uh, for colleagues, for myself. And I started doing uh, upcycling for a very long time because I'm always reusing the, the materials that I do have of at home so beads that uh, comes from uh, another necklace that i used to have and upcycling everything so this year uh, i really uh, got in the upcycling recycling world uh, with i can tell i can i do use all types of materials so uh, it could be cotton, uh, cotton uh, cords, it could be uh, cotton threads, it could be uh, t-shirt yarn, cotton wool, um, everything. Yeah. When it just goes to a thread, it, I, I just <laughs> it can't uh, stop imagining of everything I can do with it. So um, basically it's like that, that I've started. Uh, I've lost my job two years ago and nails were started from that by uh, having much encouragement of my friends and uh, colleagues that was like uh, you can't stop like this you need to do something for yourself i wish i could knew how you do you do all those things and that's how it started and uh it's been two years now that is still going on and i we should go very long time ago so uh, that's Thanks. how it uh, that's how it is Thank you, Naomi. I'm going to I'm going to let you attend to the little one. I can I can hear him. And then uh, Shamira, can you tell us a bit more about your brand and how did you start? Hi, hello, lovely people. Um, okay. If I have been rewind twenty years ago, I unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, didn't come from a family of creatives. For around about I'd say three generations of teachers and academics in my family, so. Um, when I was in university, my mom said to me, you need a solid plan A, Shamara. You'd either be an accountant or a doctor. Uh, she wanted me to be a little bit better than her. So she said, okay, no, you maybe aim a little bit higher. You don't need to be a teacher. So I had uh, this creativity within me and I had to quietly suppress it. I went on to be an accountant for 16, 17 years. I enjoyed that and I'm grateful for having had that opportunity. Now, after the birth of my second child, sitting on the couch on a extended unpaid maternity leave and I said what am I going to do with myself I can't go back to corporate I'd love to explore creative and I said to me let's see what can I how can I unearth this creativity that I've suppressed within me and I said I love writing I've always had a passion for fashion let me merge the two and write about it so i just wanted to do a little bit of a style blog it seemed to be very in vogue four years ago now i didn't want to go um, with the trend of which was basically you know style bloggers promoting trends and promoting buying stuff resources financial resources were tight for me and i said let me go against the grain i started basically i set myself this target of going on a fashion diet and I said, Shamara, you will use what you have, including your hands, what's in your closet, and your creativity. And you will prove to people that you can do fashion without spending any money. And so I started with, actually, I'll show you here, um, this rug clutch bag. Uh, it's actually upcycling a Persian rug uh, that my granny had gifted to me. It was in tatters. And I thought, why not create something functional? And this was one of the first pieces. And then I got started getting invited to events. And as fate would have it, I was sitting uh, across from Susie Menkes. I didn't even know who she was, to be fair. Um, the ex-editor of Vogue International here in Cape Town at a runway show. And she spotted me, this is probably not a good view here, in one of these skirts that I'd made 
for myself. Now it's made from a hessian a sack and then remnant stock t-shirt yarn that I collected from some lovely factories here in Cape Town that were so kind to just give it to me. So I thought, let me create something really nice to wear. I think Naomi Campbell was supposed to be at that event and I just wanted to take a nice picture. And she said to me, oh, wow, did you, did you make that? And I said, yes. And she said, what do you do? And I said, uh, I think I'm going to go back to being an accountant. And she said, oh, no, you're not. Uh, actually, accountants make the best creatives. And there's people in this room that will help you should you want to do this. And fast forward today, I'm actually one of the finalists in uh, the Young Design of the Year AFI uh, Fast Track competition. Fingers crossed, uh, they're announcing at the end of the month. And uh, yeah, so this actual piece here, I hope you can see it. Um, I said I come from generations of teachers. These are made from ties. So my granddad, my father-in-law, and my dad, all retired teachers, gifted me something like 150 vintage ties. And I decided to fabricate them and turn them into um, an upcycled coat dress. Now this actually won uh, the best sustainable uh, item in their challenge that they had. So I'm very, very proud of this little piece. Um, another example of what I have been doing, this is made from upcycle vintage denim. Again, I have an absolute love for weaving. So this is hessian and I also love the texture and t-shirt yarn that I've created this here with. And then the skirt, uh, again, it's upcycling upholstered fabric. And I use the art of weaving, a hessian t-shirt yarn and just really create a story, fabric, really from the heart, just what I love to wear. So that's it. We're, we're going to be looking forward to because you're going to be showing us a little bit of demonstrations later, right? Yes. So we're going to be looking forward to that. It's a nice little preview. Uh, but coming back to Kabani, we were just uh, we were talking about you were talking about upcycling with different uh, with furnitures and um, and what what else other accessories do you do you work with? Is it is it not just clothes? I, I mean, I, you know, as an artist, you, you have this outlook on life of you cannot be limited to anything when it comes to art. Uh, so, I mean, I, <laughs> my apartment is, everything in my apartment is painted. So, um, the, the, the project that I'm really excited about right now is the lamps that I'm making out of there's this uh, company that was uh, closing down and they were throwing away the the old man just get a little bit of sound just the button just a, like uh, run down the, beat down old um, can you hear me now a, a little bit can better me? yeah yes much better Barney, we've okay. got a bit of a connectivity yeah, so, issue there. I don't know whether maybe you'd like to just turn your webcam off just for a, a minute or two while you're speaking and then turn it on again and then hopefully we'll hear you clear. That, that might be worth doing. Thanks. Okay. Can you hear me? We, we hear yeah, you nicely. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I was just saying uh, the current project that we're working on is we're making these uh, lamps out of old uh, mannequins and just turning them into these beautiful pieces that people can use in their house, but at the same time very practical. It can actually be your bed lamp or um, just a lamp anywhere. I actually have one here in my studio. Uh, oh, so we'll yeah, that later to us for sure. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Having working with upcycling, I mean, why would you say it's a, you know, why would you choose upcycling as opposed to, um, you know, uh, the kind of straightforward go buy in a boutique? Like, what, what's the difference to you with? I mean, uh, the, I mean, the whole, the way the world is moving forward in that regard, I mean, one of the biggest uh, problem with uh, pollution is, is fashion. And, uh, you know, just uh, the fact that we, we so used to, there's, there's this culture of just fast fashion, um, you use and next season you change to a new, you know. So for me, uh, I've always been against, I like pieces that you can, I, I remember when I was a kid, my mom had this pair of shoes that four of my siblings wore when they were baby. And we only realized this later in the picture. We're like, 
where did you buy the shoes for all of us and waiting until she was like, no, it was exactly the same shoes. I just kept it. And all of you guys wore the same shoes, you know, <laughs> that for me, that was like, that's, that's timeless pieces, you know? And uh, I used to love wearing my, my dad's old jackets and stuff like that. So I was quite, uh, when I was young, I was quite big into thrift, like wearing very vintage jacket and stuff like that before thrift was even a big thing. And I've always liked the concept of you having a piece and passing it on to the next generation. Um, and just breaking away from that culture of like, I use it now, I'm bored of it, I throw it away. Uh, so I just thought that the, the, one of the things that people value so much that they pass on in generation is, is one of the medium that I'm into, which is art. So I was like, why don't I put art into pieces that I, I liked and I would like to keep on for, for a period of time where I can one day pass on, 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 on my kids. So, so it's the whole concept of implementing art into pieces that I love um, so that they can always be, you know, uh, looked up on with that level of value. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And, and Shmira, you was telling me, you was telling us about how, um, you, you know, the feedback you got instantly, you know, with some of the pieces that you were just wearing about, wearing, you know, um, out and about. Um, have you seen an increase in demand, like, for upcycling clothes um, as to, you know, you know, previously as we, you know, saying with the furnitures of just going to the usual shops to do the buy-in. Um, have you seen an increase? So, to be fair, I've in seen a massive so I've seen a massive increase in, you know, the demand and the interest in upcycled products. So if I think about it, four years ago when I just started writing my fashion blog, I have a sister and she's a university lecturer and I often get her to edit my blog. And uh, she said to me, what are you talking about, Shamari? You have terms that like dead stock, end of roll, remnant stock. She said, these are very unattractive words. Do you have any better words for this? And what does this even mean? Will the general average person even understand what you're talking about? And then fast forward to today, and I've seen such a massive evolution. And the reason why I think this has happened, I've had a good thing to think about it. And I think it's one is social media. So I think it's really made the globe that much smaller. And that's now actually filtered down to, you know, developing countries. And if you think about this, there's also been a massive re rise in kind of influencers who are promoting sustainable lifestyle and they're doing it at an exceptional pace and with scale. And that's what I love about the, you know, the impact of social media. And another thing is this recent pandemic that we're kind of still in. But, you know, the point is, it's allowed us as creators and consumers of fashion to actually slow down, to reassess what do we actually need, what does this mean to us, and how do we actually spend our money. So, you know, it's also another thing is a lot of people have taken up craft, like people have learned to knit and crochet, and they started doing all of these things. So there's a newfound appreciation for things made by hand. And I think when you put all of these together, along with living in, you know, a developing economy where resources are short, uh, where, you know, there's very little capital investment, I think a lot of designers are now taking up this challenge to actually use what they have available and use this method in terms of upcycling and refashioning, because it makes sense for developing economies and designers to now think like that. Um, so yes, I've seen a massive shift. Brilliant. So we're really excited now to see all your pieces and, uh, and demonstrations. So Naomi, since you've mentioned crochet, Naomi is our, our crochet queen uh, over here. So Naomi, ah. yeah, explain us a bit about your products and show us. Um, actually, um, uh, I have so many products. I have, I do a lot of things. I'm, I'm really honest in this. I can't stop creating or innovating or just do things better. So um, I will show you the first, some of the first things I've done in crochet, which leads me to do um, more and more and more. The first thing is the jewelry. Ah, sorry, for men, there's not much, but always <laughs> for women. <laughs> and um, this is the first one I made. So it's a That's crochet bead earring bead with um, beads. Yes, this uh, the green. Uh, it's um, nylon uh, cord uh, 
we they say it's fisherman code, but it's nylon code with beads that are upcycling that come from another great necklace that I used to wear, but I don't love, want it anymore. So um, this is what we do. This is what I do with um, big earrings, smaller ones. Uh, I hope you see it clearly. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, some of my, some of the clients I do have, uh, like uh, most simple ones. So uh, basically, I don't, um, I don't buy um, much first first materials because I always see if I got something. So uh, the thread may be uh, nylon, maybe cotton, maybe everything. Um, the beads are always upcycled. Uh, the material that I use in that this one is rings from um, curtains, old-fashioned curtains, <laughs> the plastic rings. <laughs> so it's basically this for jewelries. Um, I have some. I have one more with the uh, with the uh, the curtain rings, plastic curtain rings. That is the that is with that inside. It's lighter, it's nicer, it doesn't fall on the ears. So this is the part with jewelries. Uh, I've, you, I've been doing also weaving with um, what we say beads, smaller beads. And this one, it's... Um, is that just it's a, beads? It's a bangle. Oh, it's a bangle, okay, wow. Yes, Fred and Nylon, yeah, it's, um, it's bangles wrist. The simple ones, and you just you just put beads with it. It's some kind of weaving, and I do also with um, with crochet. Yeah, crochet one. Uh, this is the part of jewelry. Uh, the part of fashion is I do with uh, cotton threads, um, wool, and everything that is clothing. Uh, for winter, I normally do um, neck warmers. And let me get it. I was so quick in doing of getting all my things right before me for, to, for all of us to see. So this is a child one. It's a neck warm of a child. It's wool. And the, the buttons in it, upcycling buttons. Or sometimes I use uh, coconut buttons just to be like oh, always trying to get sustainable. Uh, I do also bikinis cotton thread one yes oh, beautiful we can make it it can be dress it can be um neck warmers can be rompers for, for kids everything that we can that i can get that can be crochet it's done i i usually try to make everything um this year with Priya, I'm going to say it like this, Priya, I'm sorry, but it's real. This year with Priya, we, uh, I've done the massive job of my life of making rugs. And I get to love that, um, that material much more again. It's just t-shirt yarn that normally um, factories do just throw away. So I just make it to be friends. Nice. And then to make a second, make rugs. I hope you see Gorgeous. it. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Yes. Um, and any size. <laughs> we make <laughs> like two meter forty by one eighty. Uh, we've learned we've learned the, the hard the way how to make it in different sizes. Nice. Yes. <laughs> and for smaller sizes, I, I've made coasters uh, with t-shirt yarn, with, coat, uh, with cotton cords, which this is a leftover cotton from, from a macrame um, table, uh, table runner. And the, the material left was to use it to make coasters. Um, normally, I do lots and lots of that, I got it's, it's amazing uh, baskets and everything it's always too, it's, it's always stuff. so good to to just continue um the, this by this year i was thinking of continuing with the sustainable um i've got some friends who gave me what they say um 
fabrics, scrap fabrics from um, factories and shops that's, uh, that sells curtains. And I've, I've started getting like all their samples, books, <laughs> and I've started making uh, tote bags, no more plastic, sustainable again, <laughs> um, tote bags uh, with um, jeans. Do you remember the jeans, Priya? Yes. <laughs> tote bag with jeans. <laughs> um, I made also with, um, with, the, with jeans and the scrap fabrics to make tote bags that be uh, of two colors. Front with, with, uh, with fabrics and behind with jeans. Uh, I started this week, you, this week and you're, you're going to see it now, Priya, because I didn't send you photos <laughs> too. Uh, beach bags. Beautiful. I hope you see it. Yeah. Yes. Nice. And with with materials left from those scrap fabrics, I make compost. Ah, uh, nice. What is yeah. left is really to be thrown away. <laughs> There's uh, nothing yeah. to be done with it. All stuffing. All stuffing. Yes. Uh, always. Uh, Thank you so much, Naomi. Well and done. so, Shamara, are you going to sh are you going to show us some demonstrations? Yes. What are you well, yeah. What are you going to share with us? You are the weaving, but you know, I do have leftover ties from those hundred and fifty ties. So I thought Christmas is coming up. Uh, you know, I just want to say that a lot of times Eid or Diwali, we always associate these things with new gifts and wearing something new. And how fortunate we are that we live in a time where we can change this mindset. So I wanted to prove to you just how easy things can be and how you can get your creative crafty juices flowing and even involve your kids. My daughter over here has put the hot glue gun on so the fumes might be <laughs> dark. Um, luckily you can't smell that, but here we go. So, Alice band. I don't know what you call them in other countries, but just a regular a headband. Yeah, yeah. Headband. <laughs> headband. Thrift shop, or my daughter had a pack of five, so I have a few left over. Just a normal Alice band, right? And then we were talking about all those ties, so just a regular tie. You can get a fancy silk one, you can get a made in Italy, a made in China, whatever you have lying around. I'm pretty sure your granddad or your dad will have one of these, or even just an old school tie will do. So all you need to do is start threading this through. I think I have one that I started threading. Very easy though, nothing to it. Um, I'm gonna give my sister and my mom one of these for Christmas. So I think they might be watching, no surprise to them, but they're getting it and they're going to love it because I made it and I made it with love. Um, exactly. So yeah, okay. So you go to the end and what you wanna do is take the hot glue gun and you just wanna apply some of the glue to the plastic so that it um show you that it adheres to the fabric um just a little bit of glue at the end and then you need just a regular sewing needle and some thread to finish it off um that is so handy and it's done like in a matter of seconds no right? exactly Depending on the person, you see how beautiful. So if you use like a medium sized tie, you get like the narrow bit on one side and then the volume wider bit. So I love this because it kind of resembles a scrunchie, right? So you're Absolutely. getting the volume right. And now uh, Naomi was talking about like broken pieces of jewelry. And I have this theory, like you get that sock fairy theory about all the missing socks. I have like this earring fairy th theory where I keep losing one earring. So I have some beautiful like little Indian pieces. Um, I have Indian South African heritage and they're all like broken bits or missing earrings. So all you need to then do, if you have somebody extra, somebody who loves fashion, why not add some glitz and bling to this? Because I mean, after all it is Christmas. After the pandemic, I don't think I want to wear all glitz. I could probably just do a little bit on my head to be fair. Um, so simply glue gun it down. I can do it on this one to show you how quick and how easy. Um, okay, glue it down, a few seconds. And then to finish it up, you know, if you want to be fancy, you could use some embroidery, embroidery floss in a, a contrasting color and that would look really pretty or just some regular sewing thread um, to hold it in place. There you go. And so here I have one that I made earlier. Again, with the- Oh, wow. Done it. 
And like, you can use every bit of the tie. You could put closures at the end using the label. I think it looks really pretty. I'll, I'll put it on. <laughs> Keep this on. It's absolutely really cool. stunning. Oh, Beautiful. Yeah. Christmas and it's just a matter of seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Easy peasy. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing those tips. And Gabani, you were talking about, you mentioned about these lamps that are just co uh, are coming yeah. fresh off the production line. Do you have any, any I'm, for I'm, us to see? I'm or even excited. any of your garments? I can see a lovely background of cheese. Yeah, I'm, uh, see, I'm, actually, I'm actually thinking of such a great idea that I end up doing this uh, webinar from my studio. Um, so that I actually have things around to actually take <laughs> all that home out of that, nothing. So I'm gonna flip my screen a little bit so you guys Definitely. can see the lamp. I don't know if you can see the lamp. Can you see it on top? There? We can see we can see some rays, but not yeah. The uh, so there's a lamp right. <laughs> okay, it's it's a very far at the back, and I'm using a dick stop, so I can't really. No work. worries, there is. Uh, so yeah, it's in the <laughs> studio, right? No worries. You can sh have you got some garments that you can show? Yeah, or? I do. I do. I mean, I mean the jacket I'm wearing. So what I do, I go around and I look for. I, I go on mission looking for old denim jackets because I believe denims is you know can go through generation and generation. You know, uh, and uh, for me, it's crazy how people after a season they want to let go of their denim jacket so i go and look for those denim jackets and i just do pieces of out of them like the one i'm wearing right now uh is one of the jacket that i do so and usually you'll find like a like an art piece at the back of a jacket oh, like that's that. stunning. uh so it'll be an old denim jacket and you put a and you put a beautiful piece on it and it just you know it just pop and stand out and all of a sudden it's everybody's excited about the, the denim jacket again so that's what i do to bring life to uh and, the, and with um, the paint is it yeah. um is it the fabric paint is it acrylic or what kind of I, paint? I, I use i use uh, uh fabric paint fabric paint okay. so fabric paint um and uh so what i do also i i paint my own textile so i would have like I paint plain fabric and uh, after I do the art on the fabric, then I create like a beautiful dresses. Uh, so with the whole ideas of like, you're not just buying garment, you're actually wearing the art piece on your body. Um, so people, when people purchase these items, they tend to valuable, value them more. You know, it won't be something that they will easily want to get rid of because there's a story to it. Um, there's there's a sense of you know you get connected to the ideas of like okay this is more than just a garment. It's actually an art piece that I'm wearing. And and I think just taking that concept within within fashion, uh, going back to the whole idea of me uh, wanting to see how I can add value to people sticking longer to the garment than you know this fast fashion that um, um, the world is in. And I'll take like old denims. And I would, I would just, you know, I will bleach them and tie dye them and I'll do art pieces, patterns on them. And uh, yeah, and uh, for me, for me, when it comes to, um, you know, sustainable fashion is something that I believe should become a culture. You know, uh, culture is, is basically, you know, finding a way for people to that you believe we as humans should be living and try to create the way that you can influence people into it. Uh, so I have this idea of taking art to, you know, um, combining art and fashion to create timeless pieces so that it can at least solve a little bit of that, you know, where people can actually start value, valuing their, their garment more than, um, yeah, to, you know, um, instead of uh, just going against the whole fast fashion theory. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm bearing in mind the time now because we're actually fast approaching our time out. But okay. just before we leave, and I'm opening out to all uh, to you to to all three of you, what kind okay. of tips can you share or advice can you share for budding upcyclers or those that are interested to? To, to kind of experiment? Um, 
Yeah. No, you go ahead. It's fine. I'm no, sure we'll have different. Like I mean, uh, for for me, it's always been about you know find the things that you're passionate about. Uh, I mean, the whole um, concept behind my brand is you know following the things that you love. You know, uh, for me, I've always loved. Uh, um, art and passion and uh, and uh, if there's any tip that I'll tell people out there I've always tell people is first find out the things that you are you know that get your heart beating and uh, and take that journey with that things and uh, and also you must care about you know uh, your environment and uh, and uh, always look for way that you can add value you know um, if for me if it's if it add value I am for it um, and uh, just find things that will add value to us as a, as a human race and, and our planet and with everything that we do. So for me, it's to take my little brand and see how I can add value in the industry to create something different and also to add value to um, the whole sustainable fashion culture because uh, I believe it has to become a culture. You know, it has to be a, a way of living that we're not even thinking about it, you know. Um, and um, the more people, the more awareness is being created, such platform like this, that's the only way it can become a movement throughout the world, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Smart, did you have something to give so I, I want you to say that, you know, as much as it's a challenge, it's honestly is a challenge working with... Um, you know, old fabric, vintage fabric, waste, it, it is a challenge. Um, the thing to remember is to be excited about it. And the reason why, never before has fashion been in this place. I mean, I know it provides employment and it, it has always celebrated the creative arts, but it's done that at the detriment of the planet. And to be living now and to be in fashion now where we can actually make a massive change to the future. I don't think that fashion's always been a bit flivorous, I don't know. But now we can actually make a change. And that's such an amazing challenge. And to be able to, to, to see and direct how that will be and the kind of legacy we want to leave. Another thing, as an accountant, I would like to say that it's really important when you're starting out to kind of value what you do and price it accordingly. Right, you're making one-off pieces. Essentially, you can't replicate this. It's a challenge. It's difficult. The fabric is fiddly. It takes longer. You know, there's so many different constraints working with this kind of fabric in this kind of way. Um, it's never been done before. So you're creating this. It's new. Value yourself and price accordingly. That does two things. One, it makes this a viable career option for you. Two, it teaches consumers to appreciate, you know, as um, he was saying about your art form, it appreciates this. It also makes them question, do I need to buy so much of this or will I use this for longer and enjoy it more? Do you know, it changes that mindset. So do price accordingly. Yeah. No, that's definitely, that's absolutely true. And, and working with artisans um, particularly is not valuing their time and their labor and, not, and their expertise, which is... Mm -hmm so so vital and important um, but speaking of challenges I mean what challenges have you before we leave I know we're kind of overrunning a bit but you know speaking of challenges what kind of challenges have you guys come across that you've been able to overcome and that you could share uh, with more upcyclers here with us today I think for me personally it's the price point uh, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people don't understand why certain things are priced in the way that they are um, I mean we also trying to stay away from the whole mass produ productions you know so we we um, and also the the craftsmanship that go into it and the time that you put into it to add value to it so obviously when you value it that that you know um, and you know you're also buying this piece that you would have for a long time so when you price it I price my garment like I was I'm selling uh, I'm selling fashion as I'm selling painting that one day it can be in, a, in the in the museum or you can even That's exhibit it. it you know so I, I, I put that that level of value to my work and sometimes uh, uh, people would you know, because uh, they're so used to fast fashion where they can buy for uh, a few hundred bucks and throw it away and go buy it again, you know. So for me, it's like you buy this one jacket, you're good for a very long time. Maybe your child will also wear the same jacket, you know. So 
Um, I think the whole uh, sustainable um, uh, cycle and productions and uh, the value and the time that it goes into it uh, is just for the slowly people are starting to understand why maybe certain things are a little bit pricier than the other. Um, sometimes it can become a, a, in the beginning it was a problem, but I think uh, as we move forward as people and a lot, a lot more people are starting to get it. Uh, yeah. I don't know if everybody also relate to that, the price point of. Uh, of uh, it's, yeah. it's really, it's really going to this way uh, with time because sometimes people don't understand that even if it's upcycle, um, yeah. it takes time. It takes, yeah. uh, like everyone said the expertise and everything because uh we put ourselves in uh, what we do it's yeah. not only to make it it's just our it's just the transmission of our love of everything that we like to do sure. so some people do understand it yeah, yeah, yeah and with time they're starting to understand more but yeah. um not very not very long it it takes time all we can, yeah. all i can say take time Definitely. with this time much more people are appreciating what we do yeah that's very true that's very true and then what i know one last question what do you think more of the consumers can do to help support brands like yourself um is it a question of a change of mindset as you as you as you've all been mentioning um, that we you know that uh, people need to understand the time involved and what more can can we ask for these individuals to be more supportive for brands like yourselves? I, I think for, as a consumer myself, I think it's just to question brands more. I think it's to realize the power that you have as a consumer, that every pound or penny you spend is a choice that you make. You know, fashion is something you enjoy and wear every single day. And when you spend this money, you make choices. You make choices that have like a mass impact. And even though you might be one individual, together or collectively, you can make a difference. So yes, it's mindset. It's consumers need to demand questions now they need to ask questions about where things are made how they're made and why you know they've been told a story that they continually need to buy so i think consumers now have to own that and as designers and creatives you know we have to start designing in a way that's more conscious um my biggest challenge has been really because i've not been in a creative industry i haven't had a traditional route in terms of fashion design i think that was my challenge in terms of like actually constructing a garment has been a challenge but it's also been something that's actually worked in my favor because i think out of the box i think oh but why can't you do this and everyone would say oh shamar it's impossible and then i said so there see i told you so that can work um, another important thing, I think, as designers, we start creating garments that are multifunctional. So in my last collection, I have a coat dress that converts into a skirt and a separate sk a skirt and a separate jacket. And then the jacket has sleeves that come out so you can wear it through different seasons. And again, like creating timeless pieces and all of those things are stuff we need to factor into our yeah. design. True. And I also think there's uh, this power in a collective. So I think... I think it is a responsibility that lies on everybody, you know. Uh, one of the biggest things that I always think is influence. You know, the world is influence. Uh, when you get a group of people to believe in one way and one, one um, way of living, uh, you can easily, a couple of thousand people coming together and focusing on one goal, you can influence that area, you know. So I think the more that there are people like us out there and platform like this, the more we get together, that's how easy we can create this new culture and new approach and um, realizing the value of our planet and how we need to look after it and also tweaking our lifestyle to kind of accommodate uh, a sustainable way of living. You know, uh, I, think, I think we're on the right track and we can see it around the world. People are, are shifting and people are looking, are questioning but, things, you know? Uh, there's yeah. a movement. Definitely, yeah. Well, can I just say massive thank you. Thank you so much for your time, your energy, and all yeah. the demonstration. Thank you. It's been so insightful. Thank you. And I'm going to look 